But let's go to the NFC. Uh, since our guy Jr. Bang is not here, I'm gonna say it for him. Don't nobody give a fuck about no damn Detroit Lions. As as, as Bang says each and every week, and he be wrong each and every week because they be winning. Uh, this game to me, man, I think it's gonna be entertaining. I think it's gonna be a good game. It's going under the radar for two reasons. One, because it's not it does not have the quarterback battle. We've been arguing on this podcast. For the last couple weeks, about which direction is the best way to win a Super Bowl? Is it the franchise quarterback direction, which is what what Baltimore and Kansas City have, or is this to build the team up and just have a decent quarterback like you've got in Jared Goff or Brock Purdy? And honestly, it's disrespectful to Jared Goff a little bit. I don't want to be disrespectful to Jared Goff because he's way better than Brock Purdy. Like, let's be—he's way better than fucking Brock Purdy. Like, I don't want to be disrespectful to Jared Goff, but Jared Goff is still—he's uh, a forty-degree day, uh, you know. So it's the—that's that's the forty-degree day ball. Ball between Purdy and golf. So we're going to do the legacy view here thing for uh, golf and Purdy. For me, I don't think it's really even a legacy thing with Purdy. I think it's more of a, I mean, kind of a little bit. If they win, this be the first time, and you know, they won a championship in 30 years. Last time the Niners won a championship was 1994. That was Steve Young. That was prime time. That was, um, shit, nigga. It was, who's the coach? Who's, who's the, oh, uh, Fucking, I can't even remember the dude who came back after Bill Walsh. I'm, I'm, his name is escaping me right now. But uh, Jerry Rice, real stacked team that they had, and they ended up uh, beating the San Diego Chargers to win the Super Bowl that year. He will be the third quarterback in San Francisco 49ers, seriously behind the man, Joe Montana, and Steve Young. So he will be in that lineage of uh, quarterbacks to win that. But this is more about Jared Goff for me. This is more about Jared Goff because his legacy – it's already changing, but this is, can be a tremendous legacy here. Jared Goff has a chance to get a statue, ladies and gentlemen. He has a chance to join Barry Sanders with a statue in Detroit because he already led the Rams to the Super Bowl in 2019. He was the number one overall draft pick. A lot of number one overall draft picks don't really pan out. We can sit up here and say, obviously, he's not Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford is a better quarterback. But there's way worse quarterbacks on God's green earth than Jared Goff. And as good as this team has been built by Brad Holmes and Detroit Lions and the coach of, of uh, Dan Campbell, he's the reason. If he was bad, would none of this shit matter? So if they go out here and win, take Detroit to the Super Bowl, which they've never been to. Last time they were in the NFC Championship game, they got smoked by the Redskins. So if they even make it, that's history. But if you go there and you win, now he joins Detroit sports uh, legends as Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, uh, you know, Miguel Cabrera. Even though Miguel Cabrera didn't win one in Detroit, he's a World Series champion, even with, with, with Florida Marlins. So I'm putting respect on his head for that. With the Ben Wallace, the Chauncey Billups, he joins in that range, the Fab Five. He's going to be in that lineage of, uh, of Detroit um, sports icons, man. So I feel like if he wins this, this says a lot more about him than it does Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, you just like if Brock Purdy in the, in the, in the Niners win to me, this says a lot more about Kyle Shanahan finally getting over the hump and and getting some of the twenty eight to three uh, stank off him and just how great this defense has been more than Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy gets to be in that picture with Joe Montana and Steve Young, but that's like me being in a picture with fucking uh, Barry Gordy and Dr. Dre. Like nigga, I'm here. But I'm not I'm not there yet. You know what I'm saying? Like that to me is what it would be for Brock Purdy. So this is a lot more about um Jared Goff uh, for me. I'm gonna go to Pav first. Pav, what do you think legacy wise this would do for both quarterbacks? Um I'm gonna start with golf because okay. I think that when you do things for certain franchises, it means way more. If you are the quarterback of the Detroit Lions, and you even like okay, take him to the Super Bowl, you're already in a whole different other stratosphere. If you win the Super Bowl for the Detroit Lions, who have been a symbol of impunity for my entire existence for actually the entire yeah, existence, the entire existence period. Yeah. literally, they haven't won, I think, since the 1950s. Like the last before time they actually won era. anything before the Super was yeah. 1950s. If you are the quarterback for the Detroit Lions, he becomes honestly. I, mean, I like listen. I know Matthew Stafford probably had better numbers and all that, but he was also throwing a Megatron. But I, you know, he had better numbers or whatever. But you become the best quarterback in franchise. Oh, he's you arguably, he's you, he's arguably be, you 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 he's actually he's become the third best player in franchise history behind yeah. Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders. And yeah. also, they the, he uh, granted you know they did get cooked by the Patriots, but at least you were on the Rams team that went to the Super Bowl. This is two different, and they didn't even get cooked by the Patriots. That was one of the yeah, most you right, you right, yeah, you right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. But you, you are a quarterback who has taken two teams 
to the um Super Bowl. Like you said, you were the um number one pick in the um draft. You've actually done things that not many quarterbacks have done. So for Jared Goff, if you can get the Detroit Lions to the Super Bowl and actually win it, it puts him in a whole nother complete different stratosphere. Like again, yeah. I know we were in the group chat talking about Jared Goff could be a Hall of Famer. I don't know about all of that. Yeah, he's but not getting all of it. I don't know about all of that, but yeah. it does. But but like you said, it 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 he is he is in the Michigan Hall of Fame. He he would be in the Hall of Fame of Michigan forever. And for Brock Purdy, I mean, I you know, I mean, for him, it would it, it would be a great story. Obviously, you know, last year he had to come out. You get hurt immediately, can't really play. You come out this year. If you could get to the Super Bowl and win it, um, it'd be a great story. But I don't think for legacy wise, it would it would. I don't want to say do that much for him because you still are a Super Bowl winning quarterback. But I think that when we think about this 49ers team, Brock Purdy will not be the first thing that we think about. He'll be the trend deal for this thing. Yes, 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 yes. So he won't be the first thing that we that we think about. So for him, I mean, it's dope to be a Super Bowl winning QB. But golf is the one where if he wins, it puts him in a whole nother different complete stratosphere. Courtney, well, who, how do you think this does legacy wise for these two quarterbacks? Um. Since Bang ain't here, I'll, I'll take up his. his <laughs> well, nobody give a damn about the Detroit Lions. I mean, it's cool and all. It's a, it's a cool storyline for sure. Um, and I feel like already because they've made it this far, like Jared Goff is never going to have to buy anything at any respective Detroit restaurant ever again. You know, yeah. like it's got to be on the house as far. Like he's done Matt something Matt Stafford didn't do. That's got to be worth something to them. Um, as far as Brock Purdy is concerned, he's. The NFC Championship game for me as a whole is just kind of forgettable. It's the buddy ass bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> for me. Um, and I've maintained since we started um, talking playoffs. You know, whoever comes out of the AFC is going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, and I don't care if that is the 49ers. We saw what the Ravens did to them. Um, but anyway, getting back into um, legacy for for golf and and Purdy, there's really not anything at stake for Brock Purdy. Um, but for Jared Goff, yeah, you have, like Pavi said, you got potential to really propel your propel yourself into into elite conversation um, in Detroit sports history for sure. They're definitely gonna take his Lions jersey and a pair of buffs and put them in a uh, Coney and uh, right there on eight <laughs> and he's gonna have his little little, little area right there. Uh, Dante, <laughs> what do you think this says for uh, Goff and Purdy? Uh, I disagree that it can't help. It really does nothing for Purdy. It all depends on how they win. How they win. If Purdy goes out there and lights shit up, then it legitimizes them, especially if they go to the Super Bowl and he plays well. Now, if it's another game where, you know, he's checked down Charlie and he's playing, they, people are dropping interceptions and we're going to have the same conversation about him. So with Purdy, I think a win here and taking this team to the Super Bowl after last year when he got hurt in the NFC Championship, um, I think for him that's more so – Putting him back into the talk where people could say it's not just a scheme like Brock can play ball. And um, as far as golf, I think, you know, people forget one of the main things about golf is everybody said he couldn't do it without Sean McVay. Like, yeah. And so if you can take this team to the Super Bowl, he said, take Detroit to the Super Bowl. You know, yes, they run the ball well, but, you know, playing the way he has played, he's had his turnover issues this year, but taking your second team to the Super Bowl. I was at that Super Bowl when they played the Patriots behind the Patriots bench. It was one of the most boring. It was like watching paint dry. But at the end (laughs) of the day, that was a Super Bowl where, you know, back when he played with um, with the Rams, Sean McVay would be in his ear until he couldn't be in his ear anymore. Like, you know, it's, there's a there's a limit on how long the, uh, the yeah. offensive coordinator can talk to you. And he would be sitting there talking to him like, hey, they doing this, 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 and then that shit have cut off. And so, you know, for him to go to Detroit and play the way he's played, for him, this would be a thing where he could say, nah, bro, like, I am a legit top 15 quarterback in this league. Uh, and I think for him, that's big because everybody was getting ready to call him a bust, saying, oh, man, L.A. gave up on him and they won without him. They didn't, they, they didn't need him. And now he's, you know, right here on the brink of taking his team to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and this will also go down as one of the best, one of the uh, the rare win trades because then both teams will come out of this trade with a Super Bowl. So that's something, too, that uh, will go up there, man. Uh, I want to talk about the Niners real quick, man, what this would do for them if they if they lose this game. <laughs> because I feel like that's going on the radar because they, they, can, they can lose this game. Um, this is a team that's been around. We've talked about the Dallas Cowboys and, you know, teams that's been around for about five, six years. Windows don't last that long in the NFL. Uh, and then, you know, this is something here where 
if they blow this, where do you go from here? Because how many times has Kyle, uh, you know, Kyle Shanahan, um, you know, done this, you know, and he kept getting to this point and not executed. You know, what, what are you going to say about Brock Purdy if he's the reason they, if they lose? What are you going to say about this defense if this defense isn't as great as they've been? I feel like this is going to be some some important decisions that John Lynch is going to have to make if they do um, lose this game. I want to go to Dante first because you've been on the front lines of the Shanahan thing since he's been in Atlanta. What do you think a loss here would do? Uh, for Shanahan, I think the issue would be, you know, here we go again. He can't win the big one. That's always the thing with Kyle. He'll get you to the door, but he's not going to walk through that motherfucker. And so um, – I think with the court, with the way that they've missed on quarterbacks, like I said last week, this is one team that, despite the fact that they've missed on like pretend like really three quarterbacks in the same window, they've man they're on the brink of going to three Super Bowls. So you know they've still been successful in terms of business, and you know as we all know, it's cool to do that ring that ring shit. But at the end of the day, if your team is consistently making deep runs into the playoffs, you are a successful franchise, and that's something that the 49ers have been over the past. You know, pretty much decade and a half, damn near longer. But uh, I think you know a loss that really makes you have to take a step back and say, all right, what are we gonna do here? Like, like I said, it depends. Like the same way, it depends on how they win and how they lose. If you go into this game where Brock Purdy looks like shit, and you know he's throwing interceptions, and Detroit is able to take this game, and then it's like, all right, we really need to figure out this quarterback position. And I mean, I know there's there's a quarterback at uh you know in Chicago that's looking for a new home, so. Uh, you could reach out to them, but it's a lot of opportunities out there for them to still improve that position. And so it all depends on what we see with Purdy, bro. Like, as like I said, it's, as much as I love Kyle, Kyle Shanahan to me is the best coach in the league. Uh, you got, you got to, you got to win a big one, bro. They still haven't done that. Courtney. I have a question for really? everyone here. Okay. <clears throat> Who did the 49ers beat this season? Like, Let's go, no, hold on. Before you answer this, okay. I want us all here to think about that. Like a big now, one in the head. They made some statement. They had some statement wins. But think about who those statement wins came against and how those teams ended up. Remember week five when they beat the hell out of the Cowboys? Yeah, that was the only one I was thinking Cowboys. about. But the Cowboys are the Cowboys. Did they beat the Eagles? Okay, and then, uh, oh, was it week? 12, they beat the Eagles. They beat the Eagles. Beat the Eagles. Well, that was their they statement. The Eagles. And what happened to the Eagles? But that was a different that's version. Of the that's true. Like, that was a different version of the Eagles. And Eagles. also, yes, there's reason the Eagles that about the whole, I just want to know that throughout the entirety of the season, at no point did the 49ers, in my humble, humble opinion, did they beat anyone that I'm like, you know, especially after the Ravens went to their crib and put their foot up on the fucking couch. Well, this is this this is this is why I disagree with you because I feel like yeah we looking at the Eagles how they are now, but that I feel like that was a game that started the Eagles slide. Oh yeah, that and, was, and on, on sure. top of the whole sure. the whole back and forth they had in the off season when y'all My niggas only won. What I was trying to say was were those teams that they beat for real, or was I, it just keep in mind? Keep in mind the Eagles lost to the Jets in that same season. These are all fair points. Were the Eagles ever really for real? They like, weren't, but I just think just off the fact that they, they were really for real. They I'm, the only way this the only way this will matter is if they lose. Because if we go yeah. back to every team that's won a Super Bowl, I'm and sure that's it's that yeah, yeah, Kenny yeah. Rhodes. But that's what in, in as far as the question about their window, my brother in Christ. If y'all don't really, if you can't do it now, if you again, if you can't do it now. If they make if they beat the Lions and say, you know, if you can't do it now when you don't have to worry about possibly running into like Joe Burrow, you know, um, of course, I'm not saying Patrick Mahomes is any better or 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 Lamar, especially after he came up in your crib and put his again foot up on the couch. But no, mm, mm, no, I'm not I'm not feeling too good about about the Niners, especially if Debo's not playing. Yeah, well, he, he practiced a fool, so I'm guessing he's on, on track. But Pat, what do you think this would do for the window since they've been around for a minute? Um, I was just actually sitting here looking at the ages. It's not a really a young team. Um, yeah. like you got Debo's 28. I think Christian McCaffrey's 28. Yep. Fred Warner is 27. Um, so I'm just naming some of like the star players. Like they creeping up on 30. If this was basketball, it wouldn't matter. But this is football. You only get about four, three to four good years, especially at skill positions in um, football before you start to take that deep slide. 
Um, usually, now you got some guys who go out there and defy the odds, but usually you only get about four to five good years. Um, so, and again, uh, like you said, this team has been a model of consistency, especially over the past decade. They've been pretty good. I mean, last year was kind of a wash. If you go out there with no quarterbacks, what do you actually want me to do? Um, right. but you got to get a, but, but you have to start getting it done. Like, I think maybe like, maybe you could get, and also like Dodge, it depends on how you lose. If you have a demore, like last year, it was like, again, like I said, what do you want me to do? But if you come out here and get demoralized, this might be yeah. a thing where next season, like your the psyche of your team just isn't the same, and you drop down right. like eight and eight. I mean, well, eight and nine or nine and eight because they play another game these days. Um, so that might be a thing that happens. But I think that maybe if you go out there and you know you lose by like last second field goal or something, or just like something fluky happens, I think this team still had maybe one, one and a half, maybe two more years left. But the time is definitely ticking because this is these guys not like you know two three years pro these guys have been around for a pretty good minute now injuries gonna start to creep up age gonna start to creep up uh so if it's any year to get it done probably this year all right let's get to straight to our predictions for this game man uh this one uh i'm gonna regret picking this i really i, I didn't feel good when i woke up this morning and decided on this what Detroit Lions going to the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 I'm not buying what the San Francisco 49ers are selling. Uh, I, I, I don't believe in Brock Purdy. I've never believed in Brock Purdy. I said it right the fuck away last year. And, and, and Mikey kept putting in group chat, Brock Tober this, Brock Tober that. I won't get the final laugh. Uh, I was not impressed by that defense last week. Um, they basically, uh, they lucky that Jared, not Jared, but Jordan Love threw the worst pass, maybe in the history of this sport, last week. <laughs> Like, that's the reason they want. And Jared Goff is way better than motherfucking uh, Jordan Love. And more important, Dan Campbell got these dudes believing, man. Like, I really think they believe. They think it's their time. And they ain't scared of shit. And, you know, I, I'm going Lions. I'm going Lions going to win this one. And Lions offense ain't been stopped all playoffs either. I'm going Lions 34 to 21. I think this will be a double-digit win for the Detroit Lions, my auntie will be blowing my phone up on Sunday. Uh, we're talking about everything that's going on in, in, in Detroit. Pat, which way are you rolling for, for this game? Um, I'm going with the Lions, but um, I'm going with the Lions because of the fact, like, number one, I think golf is a better quarterback than Purdy. And the Lions have playmakers. I mean, I, yeah. I remember the first time I saw Jamar Gibbs, his name, right, play this season. Jamar I was – yeah, Jameer Gibbs. I was like, obviously, David Montgomery is a really good steady back. I mean, we watched him for years with the Bears. Really good steady back, you know. But I was like, yo, Jamar G J Jameer Gibbs is a home run hitter. Like, you know, he you he's a legit playmaker. He's fast. You can just give him the ball in any type of way that you can give him the ball. I think last week they did a better job of getting him the ball in just any type of way that, that you could possibly get him the ball. And like you said, Dan Campbell, I don't know what he be in the things telling the locker room, telling them, but – he got them really ready to run through a wall. Now, granted, last week I did see the very last drive Brock Purdy played. I did see him make some throws. It was, it was good throws. Yeah, he I did, that. The last drive he did make some. He did make some throws. If he can come out here and again, they just again keep the game close. And if we get like one last drive <laughs> and you call it right, he go out there and make the throws. I think they'll be okay. But still, I'm gonna go with the Detroit Lions. I'm gonna go with the Detroit Lions. Like, uh, let's say. 27 to 17. Dante, who you got? Uh, I am also taking the Detroit Lions. Yo, uh, I, just, oh. I, I just do not do not Thank feel like the Niners are gonna love. get it done. That's crazy. Uh, no, 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 it's no, gonna, love. It's no we're not gonna do that. I don't let me very no. I'll be rooting for their demise while yeah. intoxicated on Sunday. Like that's why I would yeah. be doing. And don't get don't let's be clear. I would love, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to see the greatest Caucasian running back to ever live. Go to the Super that's Bowl. That's how a white man runs but, football. Damn, bro. But brother, <laughs> it's, it's, you know that that's a that's one family when people be like when I try to tell people, hey, bro, genetics play a part in this. No, his daddy go look at their lineage. Yeah. No, fuck that. His daddy, his mama, his granddaddy. Like, go look at the lineage yeah. of the McCaffrey family and how athletic they are. But no, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose. Detroit gonna get it done. I got Detroit 24 to 21. 24 mm. 21. I think golf looks shaky again. Uh, hate to say it, but no, nah, I'm going with Detroit. Hope I'm wrong, but Detroit. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong like a motherfucker. I just want to see Michigan niggas in Vegas. Yeah, I'm going to be the one to break it to you guys. I don't think Detroit's winning this football game. You going to the Niners? Field. It's not going to be all loud like in Detroit with full Alliance fans. Um, they got Christian McCaffrey. Um, 
I, I don't I don't see Detroit winning this football game. Mainly, in my opinion, I'm just thinking about. For me, the X factor is the coaching. I don't think Dan Campbell is going to, like you said, Patty, great motivator. Like, that's the guy in halftime. You absolutely want him grabbing you by the pads and shaking you, you know, for sure. But he's not going to X and O his way into scheming up a game plan for Jared Goff and coming up with some game-winning drive, in my opinion. Shannon Rob- can also game plan himself out uh, to Tweakville, too. You are absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> but I think that, in my opinion, just like he cooked up that drive for Brock Purdy last week, uh, I think he'll be able to have that kind of success. I do think it's going to be a very good game, um, and I think it's going to be a close game. And I got, um, for me, I'll say I'll say 30-24 Niners. Then paper won't display a hater's old news. Money on the other line, so I'm not going to hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not going to.